So this one's for marketers who are going to want to know a little bit more about what their customers are needing. The, the way we usually do that is to uh, uh, you know, send a survey around. But the problem is uh, everybody's on mobile phones now. So, so a survey doesn't really make sense uh, on a mobile phone unless it's fast and made for mobile. And, and Kuala Roo has just this, the survey for you. And we're going to see it right now. Who are you? I'm Sean Ellis, the founder and CEO of Qualaroo, and uh, run marketing on a lot of companies that you've probably heard of. Companies uh, long term at companies like Log Me In, uh, but shorter term stints at Dropbox and Eventbrite, and uh, so so seen a lot of cool marketing things out there. Usually take a pretty technology driven approach to marketing. In fact, I came up with the uh, term a few years ago, growth hackers, that has. Uh, it really seems to have taken off in the last couple of years, and uh, and so now I'm I'm working on a company that helps to uh, develop some technology for marketers that helps them be more effective. Yeah, and it's a simple product. Uh, you know, sometimes I have things here that are like augmented reality, and it takes some time to unpack on what the product is. But it, it's just a way to ask a survey question or a set of survey questions, but to a mobile user. Right. Uh, yeah, the mobile is our is our new product, but uh, historically it's been a really simple way for a marketer to uh, target survey questions on a website. So as someone's using that website, asking them in context to their experience what they're trying to do, and then when they learn a bit about that user, they can actually target a call to action to that user that that drives a conversion event. So Very that's, cool. Can we see it just so uh, yeah, we so cover the, that? The mobile piece is uh, is new for us, and it's basically it's it's first uh, what oops I'm trying to hit a refresh here to have it pop up. It's first thing that I've seen that's really seems built from the ground up for mobile. So you can see it down there. It's opt in. If somebody clicks on that, it um, if they came through a desktop browser, it would actually use our, our desktop pop up. But it's detecting that it's coming through a a mobile phone browser. Yeah, and it. You can see it automatically reformats. It does it as a overlay on the site, so it's it's really quick. We we have it on Rails so that somebody is not going to design the thirty or forty question surveys that you see on the web a lot of times. And then it's just really made for people with big thumbs like me, so it's really easy to to quickly go in and answer. We try to do only one write-in, which is optional at the end, and uh, and uh, learn about, you can see even my big thumbs, that's why we don't do many write-ins. Learn about product is the task that I'm trying to do. Okay. And then you would send it and then close out of it and you're right back on task of what you're trying to do on a mobile. So we've, we've really tried to design it so that it's uh, less than a minute to complete, simple, and helps you understand what it is that mobile users are trying to do on your website versus desktop users. Usually they have really different tasks and once you understand that, you'll be able to give them a better experience. Well, we could, we could use this for all sorts of stuff like if you're a restaurant or whatnot, you know, getting feedback from your customer, did you find what you needed? Exactly. And you, you said that based on the write-in that somebody could be watching that in real time and actually chat with them? Is that possible? Uh, we, do, we actually integrate with different chat products. So okay. you, you can, based on if they answered a certain way, so you qualified them through, we're not doing the chat yet on the mobile, but you know, on the website for a desktop, they answer a certain way that they're really qualified to have your customer service rep spend some time with them, then you can prompt them to chat. Uh, very cool. Yeah, we, we uh, have chat on Rackspace.com so people can get help. Uh, you know, and it helps conversion, right? It That's does. Why we do that. It does. Because oftentimes they have some weird technical question, like, can you handle this uh, kind of Hadoop architecture? You know, <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah, we should have had that on the fact, but you know, then you answer the question, and then, and then they go, oh, okay. You right. Know. And sometimes they're just not very qualified as customers, and especially if it's a smaller company that doesn't want to have someone on standby all the time, they might only want to chat with with a subset of users, and this is a way to sort of filter out the people who probably would be better for like a self-service kind of help. Now, if a thousand people fill out this form, what, what do I see as a marker on, on my side? It, it, you have the ability to look at, at um, responses individually, or you can look at the breakdown overall of responses. Um, it's pretty just straightforward reporting. You can uh, export it into Excel, so you can start to manipulate the data a lot more easily. 
Um, but it's, uh, it's pretty just straightforward on the reporting. What we're really focused on with the product is to try to make sure that uh, the data gathering and feedback process is something that's really painless for the end user. And on the web side, we've done over a billion surveys served to people and uh, and it just it keeps growing because I think uh, users really don't complain about it being on a site versus some surveys that just take over your whole screen without opting into them uh, can be can be pretty annoying and so we're trying to make this something that actually helps the experience rather than uh, kind of gets in the way yeah well I, it's certainly um, you know I, I hate surveys because you have to oftentimes fill out a lot of stuff. And it's like, ah, come on, man. I just buy your product. I don't need right. to tell you how to fix it. Um, but here, it's, it, on a mobile phone, if it's just three or four questions, boom, 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 it, it's much more useful. How much do you, how much, like if Rackspace wants to put that on, on their mobile website, how much would that cost? How, uh, how do, how right now, it's, it's an add-on to our existing products. It would be $99 to uh, add the mobile piece on. Um, yeah, that's that's for pure surveying. If you start doing some of the logic where you route people around the site or serve the call to actions, that's based on traffic. So okay. price price goes up based on that. Okay, so ninety nine bucks, and then it's a it's a subscription, right? So every subscription, yeah, so two hundred bucks a month or something like that. Or? Exactly, and uh, so one hundred ninety nine is our our base price, and then this is a, a ninety nine dollar add on to that. And, Cool. Less money if you buy a full year, that kind of thing. Pretty so good. since you're the growth hacker expert, right? <laughs> what, uh, let's switch from talking about your, your company, because it, it's pretty straightforward. Are you going to build a family of products for the marketer? Or? We are, so, so really what we're doing, um, you can imagine that the, with, there's a lot of data that's flowing through the system where that data is tied to actions that people are taking on the site. And so we can build some pretty intelligent systems with all of that and that's really the, the vision for the company is longer term that we're we're doing some things that drive conversions and help to to really uh have a more tailored personalized experience for each user based on based on information that we've we've learned from other users and that often requires both qualitative and quantitative inputs so a lot of times people are making a lot of decisions purely off of like quantitative analysis but yeah. when you can't tie what people are doing to what they're thinking and what they're trying to do um, you, you're missing a big part of the picture so that's when we bring those two things together uh, that's that's ultimately our goal is to help people engage users so that they can improve the experience for their customers and and then ultimately improve their results and it's kind of and even when I was at Dropbox or logged me in that was a big part of what I focused on as a marketer was just learning as much as I can about the users yeah. and figuring out where they're having difficulties in using the product and you know, taking away that friction and what they were trying to accomplish and making sure that we map the experience to what they're trying to accomplish and that we set the right expectations for what the products were great for. Since you've been a marketer inside startups, how is that world different than, let's say, you're wor working at Procter and Gamble or some big old, uh, you know? So I haven't actually company. been at Procter and Gamble, so I don't know. But I well, think I think basically, as marketing departments get bigger, uh, roles get more and more specialized, and that's the part that I like about you know startup is that you you get to do all the different parts of marketing and yeah. and. Obviously, um, you don't have the luxury of doing everything you potentially could, so it's a lot of triage and prioritization and really trying to focus just on the super high impact things, but uh, it's, also, it's also a much more controlled environment. So you can imagine for a Budweiser or a, a Procter & Gamble that um, being able to actually measure the impact of an effort on, on results, it's there's just so many things that are being done and so many results that are being driven is that I think it is a lot of guesswork where in a brand new startup, you, you can see, you have just a lot more visibility into the impact of the, of the things that you're doing. Obviously, online marketing helps all companies with that, that you, you have a much better trail of being able to tie back the effort to, to the conversion event. But, uh, how, how is mobile changing marketing, particularly in the startups? So, you know, because you've seen the growth hacker movement grow up. You know, is, how how are things changing here? Uh, I'm, and I think it's still. I don't think growth hacking has really gone to mobile yet. So it'll be interesting to see what people. And what do is with growth it. hacking? When, when you say because I've seen that term thrown around by a lot of people in the yeah. Industry. So the way I think of it is, it's just it's really. Um, 
it's actually a subset of what, you know, when I was talking about Procter & Gamble would have a gazillion things they could do with marketing. These are the, these are the much more sort of tracking and technology driven marketing initiatives that, um, that somebody who, ev every initiative is tied to impact on growth for growth hacking. So it's, it's uh, part of the reason I came up with it is because I was recruiting people to replace me at companies like Dropbox and just I, I would see people with just such a broad skill set and I didn't have a lot of confidence in them. When I looked at the fastest growing companies, they, they tended to often not even have a marketer driving that growth. It was often an engineer or somebody who just had a much more focused set of you know, built-in functionality and the product could drive growth so much more effectively. Than, Give me an example. Uh, just even, even with Dropbox, for example, just the, they recently added, um, when you add a new file to your Dropbox, there's, and you, you click on the Dropbox link at the top of the screen, you see the four or five most recent files that you've saved into your Dropbox or updated in your Dropbox, and there's an instant share this file link. If you click on that, you're gonna get a shareable link that's gonna actually now take someone to a page that is gonna not just have your document, but it's actually gonna be branded Dropbox and introduce somebody new to the Dropbox experience. And this is separate from a viral loop, right? A viral loop means I want you to be on the product, because if you're on the product, the product got better. Like right. Waze is a great example of this. If you're reporting where accents and cops are, all of a sudden the product got better for me, right? Right, so, so the, yeah, a network effect, I think is definitely something that, uh, that is part of this, and I think a viral loop is part of this, but it's, it's much more about leveraging just, it's, it's, everybody is networked together online. There's so much more tracking. It's so much better for just experimenting, seeing what's working. A lot of times it requires something beyond the capabilities of your traditional marketer. You either have to work closely with an engineering team or ideally you even have an engineering background and you can do some of that experimenting yourself, but it's, it's really a lot more effective than just using sort of a traditional marketing playbook to try to drive growth. Yeah. What, what other things are you seeing happen in the startup world that, in terms of marketing? What, what other growth hacking t I, tips or tricks are you seeing? Uh, I mean, I think it's pretty unique for, for every company. So yeah. things that, that work for a Pinterest are not gonna work for you know, somebody else. That, but I think it's about understanding, understanding the unique benefits of a, of a product in its way that you could grow it. And, um, and so in the case of Dropbox, it's all about this sharing and collaboration or files are the, are the growth pieces where there is this individual personal experience where you're just keeping your data in sync between devices, but making sure that you, you understand those unique advantages that you have with the product and taking as much friction as you can out of that and prompting as much sharing as you can with that. Um, but I think the same thing with Pinterest, it's the same thing with um, just about any company. So, so probably the thing that companies that have growth teams on them and really, even if they don't call them growth hackers, these, these growth teams that include product people and, and engineers, uh, a lot of what their focus is, is on, on engagement. Yeah. They're, you know, if somebody, if somebody doesn't come in and have a great experience with the product and they disappear the next day, then, then you're not gonna be able to build a big base of growth. But if you can drive engagement and you can keep them coming back more often, every time they come back is a new opportunity to get them to, to share that experience with someone else. I think in the, in the early days of uh, viral optimization, people weren't very experience focused. They were just, oh, I, I have to scrape someone's address book before they leave. And so even in the effort to get them to share the experience, you were undermining their experience and, and often upsetting them so that not only did they not stay because they didn't have a good experience, they actually had a bad experience which drove them away and uh, and ruined your brand. And ruined your brand. And I see. So this is sort of the modern word of mouth. Instead of me telling you, "Hey, download Waze," uh, I would share something with you, or you know, have an experience where I would share it on my Facebook feed, and then all of a sudden you would see, "Oh, I should get Waze because that's cool. It tells me where the cops are." Where right? right? And you'd find contextually relevant ways to prompt people to want to share. So it's not just it's not just sort of a one size fits all share button that you put on every product, but it's, it's trying to figure out when is the right time to 
to invite someone to share the product. And it's, and it's knowing that um, if they have a great experience, they're already going to feel good about sharing. And then if, if, if you're saying, I keep coming back to Dropbox because it's, 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 it's one where I had the experience. But you, there's a lot of people that just word of mouth was a really important component of Dropbox, and it still is. But there's another group of people that were actually sharing a file. And in the process of sharing that file, someone became a user of the product. And, and being able to maximize every one of those opportunities leads to a really fast growing company. Um, what, uh, part of this is measurement. Knowing like uh, at Facebook, they knew if somebody used the product seven times, they were very likely to become a long-term customer. So the, the, goal, the first goal of your experience was get you to use it seven times. Right, exactly. <laughs> and it, it, in other words, they were measuring how many times does a user come back. That's sort of how they, they figured out what was working and what wasn't. What, what are your tips to startups in terms of studying? Uh, what things should they be studying, I guess is the question. I think ultimately it's that there's, there's a challenge with measurement because so many things can be measured that you can just get overwhelmed with data. So ultimately it's about figuring out what your goal is. If you, I, I think in, in the case of Facebook, and it's the same thing I've done with, with a lot of companies, is that you reverse engineer success and you're trying to find the data that led to that success. So they're taking a really active long-term user. And they're seeing what did that person do differently than the person who disappeared after two or three visits. Yeah and trying to compare the data. So I think in, uh, that that's where the data becomes a lot more interesting when you're actually comparing data between um, a creative that doesn't get response and a creative that does get response. You learn a lot more than just knowing what was the response of this creative. You, you know, it's, it's knowing that one is way better than the other and then the next question is trying to figure out why. And if you can answer why, that's kind of where, where Qualaroo fits in is trying to answer that that why. So part of it is, is the experience that someone might have when they get to a website, but yep. part of it is the expectation they had in the first place. Somebody who wanted what the product was genuinely good at doing is also much more likely to stick around than someone who thought the product was going to do one thing that turns out that it's not really good for that, but it's great for something else. Yep. And so part of that is like the more that you can take your really passionate customers and understand why they love the product, what they were originally looking for, then you can, you can build that product promise based on what the product's great at, and you can try to map that to relevant intent that people have when they're looking for something like that. No, that's really, really key, and it's why we work a, a lot on our systems to make sure people figure out what it's for and how to get it done right away, right? Because exactly, and, and I think that's- If you start a few servers up and you're successful, you feel good and you're likely to stick around and come back tomorrow, right? <laughs> exactly, and so I think that's so, yeah. I've seen so many companies that um, instead, of, instead of focusing on giving someone a great experience that brings them back, they focus on collecting an email address so they can spam them in case they don't come back. Yeah. And in the process of collecting that email address, they actually maybe make the experience worse. And so what I, I've, I've always found that companies that give- Particularly on mobile where you know every key Keystroke is a lost opportunity to thrill the user, right? Exactly. And I mean, so look, look at this product. It, it does stuff without me even keying anything, all right? I, I talk to it and it re responds, and it, it, it's the new world, yeah. You know? Right, right. And so, um, and yeah, and I think that's, that's the thing that's really interesting with mobile. So sometimes, what's I think different between a survey and a long registration form is that a survey is temporary. A survey is, and if it's a survey done in the right way, hopefully it, it doesn't add very much pain, but now you learn what people truly want and you can optimize the experience based on that information. I think that's the big thing with mobile is that everything I've seen is people are much more task oriented. They're, they're specifically trying to do something on mobile. People aren't generally just browsing about companies to learn what they do. The big screen's much better for that, but if they, yeah. if they are going to a travel site, they want to go in and book a ticket really fast and they want it to be as painless as possible. And if you don't understand what it is that people are trying to do when they're coming to your website, it's really hard to, to optimize that website to that experience. And ultimately, the only way that you can know if you've, if you've done a good experiment is, is just measure downstream 
how, how much people are sticking around. So it is the, the conversion rate optimization and just engagement optimization are much more about just experimentation. But if you, if you have an understanding of what people are trying to do, you're going to run much smarter experiments. You're going to get to an optimal result a lot more quickly. So I actually had one, one company that, um, that we, uh, it was a free product um, to, uh, well, I'll actually even say it. So, so log me in. Uh, we had a channel that sent 200,000 new people a day to go in and try the product. And it was a really cheap channel. And we had 10% sign up. So 20,000 people a day were signing up through this. And then there was a 97% drop off rate at the download step. And I experimented like crazy to try to get more people to download the product, and um, nothing was working. But when we actually home built a survey and asked the question, is anything preventing you from downloading at this point, we learned that they didn't believe the product was really free. That suddenly it was, it was the asking them to download a product. They liked the idea of it, but when they saw that they could download the free product, that's, that's when they got scared and backed out. And so our next experiment tripled conversion rate once we had that, that insight. And our next experiment was just to give them the paid version or the free version to download. We pre-checked the free version, and, but, but I couldn't guess that experiment. I, I had to solve a wow. known problem to, to kind of get to there. Wow. Yeah, so it's a cool combination when you can take those insights in context to that point in the experience and use that information to drive much smarter experiments. Pretty crazy. Well, that's the new marketing. You have to do, <laughs> you have to do a lot of asking of your customers. Why do you stop buying our product? <laughs> and, that's, and that's the beauty with, with the I would web. never have thought about that, right? Yeah, I mean, but again, like kind of going back to a Budweiser, like the, you know, you go into a 7-Eleven and you decide not to... to to buy the bud, you can't really engage to, to understand from that user. I mean, you can do focus groups that are yeah. totally out of context. You can, you can do other things, but you know, when someone's in an e-commerce experience and they abandon their shopping cart from something, you can actually ask them, why did you change your mind? And when you know why, it may be that you just need to be clear about your return policy or that you do offer express shipping or some things that, that uh, it's just really hard to, to guess. And if you try to if you try put all that information and it turns out to not be relevant, then you maybe overwhelm them with more information than they needed and you can hurt conversions. So the more that you can take advantage of the two-way nature of the web to really understand needs and then, and then optimize and continuously improve then your, your customer experience on your website, then it, it just stacks the odds for being able to go out and find effective ways to, to acquire more customers. Now, very cool. Uh, where do we get uh, Qualaroo? Uh, Qualaroo.com. The uh, mobile, if you want to play around with it, is at Qualaroo.com slash mobile. Very cool. Thanks for coming in and talking to me about marketing. I, I love it because I'm in the marketing department. So <laughs> yeah. i got to keep my skills up. <laughs> cool. So well, thank you very great, much. Great talking to you about it.